Happy Monday, guys. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Monday. welcome to the Modern People Eater, Crystal. Oh, thank you. So excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been it's been a bit of a, a slow day. We were just talking about that before we hit record. It was a holiday weekend and it can be a little difficult to get your Monday going. And so what better than to uh than talk about uh topics that we that we love and uh that are super exciting. And so we're really thrilled to have you today. Thanks. Yeah, excited to be here. It's a good way to wrap up the Monday after holiday weekend. So I'm I'm I've had plenty of coffee. I'm ready to go. For sure. Yeah. I'm have my afternoon cup. So uh <laughs> let's let's do this. Let's Is that do your this. first afternoon cup or your second? Oh, come on, Daniel. You know me. I'm a I I have a coffee problem and I know <laughs> it. I drink like eight to ten cups a day. Oh my goodness. It's not healthy, not for the faint at heart. But right. uh, it uh, it's where I'm at in life, so um, <laughs> embrace it. I it works it. for you, so yeah, it, it works. It works. So we have a lot of traditions on the Modern People Leader. I, I, hopefully, you've listened to a few of the episodes. We follow them every episode, and so the first that we like to kick off every discussion that we have, it we call it good news stories, and mm -hmm. it's a personal work related story from the past week or two. Just a, a nice way of kicking things off, uh, showing a little gratitude, a little positivity. Yeah. Who wants to? Well, I'm going to pick on you, Crystal. Uh, I would love to hear what what good news you have. Yeah, um, it's a good news story, but also it's more of a funny story that made me laugh, and I haven't laughed uh, to like tears tears streaming down my cheeks, laughing in this long. And it was something. It was at my own expense, uh, so that might be why it's a bit good news. But the other, um, the other day on our last people, we do a global people team meeting once a month, uh, bring the entire team together. So for us, it's about 60 folks globally. Um, obviously, it's my meeting, so I'm sharing my screen and I wanted to bring a little joy to the, the meeting. So I wanted to open us up with a dance party. And so I said, look, I want to turn on their cameras. I'm going to play some music. We're going to have a 30 minute dance party. Go all out. I'm going to record us, you know, and I envisioned 60 little squares that we could share, you know, we always record our sessions and share it out afterwards. So I'll share us all having this dance party and it's going to feel really great. So we did it. It was fantastic. We had so much fun. And then I went to share the recording out and I realized when I had recorded it, I somehow only pinned myself as a speaker <laughs> to the screen. So I recorded only me full screen dancing for what seemed like the most painful, long 30 seconds of my life watching it back. And then of course I had to share it out to the team because it was part of this big global meeting I had done. So, I mean, I had not laughed so hard at my own expense in a long, long time. And I brought so much joy to my team because of that little error. Um, so I don't know, that's my good news story. That might be the best <laughs> good news story. I, yeah. I had to mute because I was <laughs> laughing out loud. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And it is super relatable. And, and so there's a reason why Daniel kicks off like, like all of the the Zoom, you know, all the Zoom meetings are really done from from his laptop because we we're doing all of this virtually for the most part. And it started with me re recording from my laptop, but I kept getting the that speaker setting, you know, yeah. what what you're focused on when you record. I kept getting it wrong. And Dan was like, you know what? Get We're good. I, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take this over Steven. So <laughs> I, I understand the pain and I'm so glad one of you are, you know, driving this one because who knows what I would have done. So the first episode that we ever recorded with a guest, speaking of zoom failures or, or fails, um, we forgot to hit record and <laughs> we waited until like minute 40 and we were like, uh, I don't think we were recording anything from the last 40 minutes. Oh, and man. luckily she was nice enough to re-record, but oh man, me and Steven are definitely laughed about months, that. I tell yeah, yeah. It yeah. does. All right. So I can, I can go next. So this weekend I'm going to Cuernavaca in Mexico and I'm going for a wedding. And this is the second time that I'll be in Mexico just in the last month. So, um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's gonna be a lot of fun. I've never been to Cuernavaca. Apparently it's this cute little town in Mexico. And um, yeah, I'm excited. It'd be nice oh, to get away was... for a weekend. Absolutely. My good news is I also had a a nice weekend. Um, I got we so Daniel and I are first cousins once removed, which means that Daniel's father is my first cousin. And we're part of a really big 
Latinx family. And so we, there's a pretty, a pretty sizable, uh, group of us here in Austin and there, I would, I want to say like 20 cousins, cause that's kind of the word you use <clears throat> in our culture. When you talk about family, it's like, Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my cousin. <laughs> so there were like 20 or 30 cousins of all ages. And it's just, you know, my dad just turned 80 and his, the next brother up is 83. And so they're all fairly, you know, they're getting up there. And it's uh, such an amazing thing when you bring a mix of the the youngest generation, like the kids that were mm -hmm. out doing the piñatas. We did a little early Easter egg hunt. And uh, with all of the in-betweens, all the way up to kind of the elders of the family. And so it was a lot of fun. I, you know, it was one of those things where we my partner and I were juggling multiple family commitments. And uh, so I was able to squeeze it in and it was a lot of fun. So, so that's that my good fun. Name. Yeah. Oh, the joys of a big family. For I, sure. I, let's see if I can get a family invite one of these years. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> we would love, well, and, <laughs> and I have a question about Austin because I know you've spent some time in Austin, but I, I can't get there quite yet. And so Let's talk about you. You know, I, I call this our Brene Brown question. What is your story? Tell us your story from systems implementations earlier in your career to talent to now people leadership at the executive level. You've had quite the journey. And so walk us through your story and how that has led to you becoming the chief people officer at uh, Vimeo. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's quite the story, quite the journey. Um, you know, I think one of the things that just stands out about my story is that it was very non-linear and sort of unexpected. So had you asked me in my 20s, what do you think you were going to be when you quote unquote grow up? I don't know that I would have said a chief people officer, let alone at Vimeo, which is such a well-known brand. Um, so I feel very fortunate. But yeah, I, you know, I started my career early on. I entered university thinking I was going to be a communications graduate or at least study communications, broadcast journalism. And then it was in the, to age me a bit, it was in the height of the kind of dot-com boom. Um, and I was really intrigued by the tech industry. And, you know, we had people coming in and guest speakers from Microsoft and Amazon and just kind of talked about the need and the growth opportunity and the unknown that was ahead of us with, with all things internet and technology at the time. So I, I made a big pivot and went into technology and I actually graduated with an undergrad, undergraduate degree in management information systems. Um, which I don't even know if they have that degree anymore today, but, you know, very tech heavy and I, I enjoyed it. So it led me to a wonderful career in consulting, which I think is a great breeding ground for all folks, because you're always constantly learning new environments and learning how to manage different people and personalities and all the things and exposure to a lot of different industries and type of work. So I had a really fulfilling and rewarding career in consulting, uh, in the IT world at Deloitte for many, many years. Um, but and it was through that experience, though, that I think a, a good mentor and, and leader kind of said to me, you know, is, is this something that really brings you joy? Like when you look at your strengths, what is it that, you know, brings you joy and, and what are those strengths? And when I really thought about it, they were much more it was less about tech and the technol the technical aspects of the role. But I loved leading people. I loved solving problems. I loved um, like focusing on learning and development and helping others grow. And it was through that kind of self-awareness and, and uh, self-reflection that I was able to say, you know, I think that this IT audit technology work isn't really for me. I love all these other things. What other opportunities are out there? And Deloitte was big enough. So I was lucky that I was able to transfer into their internal talent development organization, like I guess another way to call it their HR. Um, and then I've never looked back. So I kind of found my home and that was probably, you know, in my late 20s. Uh, so I feel very fortunate that I had that. And then, you know, I've had a wild ride since then being in, in HR where I have worked at tiny startups to really big global companies and everything in between. And I feel lucky enough that this, this journey has led me to, to Vimeo. And I've been here just over a year um, and it's been a really great experience. And I think one thing that I, you know, reflect back on is just trying to always round out my experience. And so it was always like, where, you know, have I tried talent acquisition and recruiting? I should probably dabble in that. Oh, I, you know, what's it like to be a business partner? It's probably a great idea to like look for an opportunity there. And so I took a lot of like linear lateral turns, if that makes sense, or non-linear lateral turns in order to round out experience to get where I am. And I think that was really beneficial. I I have always said, because I also uh, started my career in consulting with big four. I was at Ernst & Young and it just was, it's such a dynamic way to start your career, especially if 
you don't really know what you want to do when you grow up. And I feel like that is often the case with, with people, with people entering the, the, the workforce and between the, the being able to do different things. And not only that working with different stakeholders, but also being exposed to different industries, obviously it led to you ultimately, you know, pivoting your career, getting into high tech, and then also kind of not only getting kind of more of an industry focus, but also kind of a subject matter expertise and shifting that it, there's just so many opportunities. If you are, if you have the personality to like go out there and kind of go with the flow for the lack yeah. of a better word. Yeah. Absolutely. And, so, and so if we were at a party and we were to, to ask someone to ask you, Oh, you know, I, I, didn't know that you had a new job and tell me mm. more about your new role. You know, tell me about what your company does. How would you explain to your, you know, the, those closest to you or uncle Bob, what <laughs> Vimeo does? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel fortunate because most often I say I work for Vimeo and everyone's like, Oh, I know Vimeo. I use Vimeo, which is the best response, right? I, I love hearing that. But on that rare occasion where folks aren't familiar with Vimeo or how I would just describe it to my kids is, you know, we talk about everyone loves a video, right? Especially um, my kids, when I think about every time I show them pictures, I'll be like, oh, let's look at some pictures. They pop up and they always try to hit like a play button that doesn't exist. Cause they're like, we want to watch it in a video though. We want to see like the movement. We want to see the action. So it's so funny. So I said, you know how you love those videos? You love like, you know, thinking grandma Jackie or grandma Margaret's talking to you over the picture. That's a video. Mommy works in a space around video where we create what Vimeo is a, a video experience platform. Of course, I don't describe it like that to my kids, but like it really enables anyone like you kiddos or like me or anyone in the workplace to create high quality video experiences that connect humans. And so it's so funny because my, my kids can even relate because they love that what feels like a more human connection with their grandparents or whoever is not around via via video. So everyone knows Vimeo as like a video playing destination, but what they don't know typically is that we do so much more, especially in the enterprise space. Like we're really, um, you know, focusing on helping enterprises and teams communicate more effectively and bring their ideas to life. Love it. And so why should Daniel and I be jealous that you get to work there? Cool. I mean, how much time do we have? I, I do. I do love Vimeo. It's a really unique, <laughs> um, unique place in a really great way. Um, look, I know I'm biased, but you know, some things that stand out to me, like first and foremost, part of the reason I joined Vimeo were, were the people. I mean, we have some of the most fantastic humans um, on the planet and we're, we're spread all over the, the planet. And we've got just yeah, great humans that are really kind and compassionate, smart, talented, uh, driven folks. I think that's a big part of what brings me joy at work or the people I work with. Also being in my role, it's really important to me that um, I believe deeply in the work that we're doing. And I feel connected to our mission, the vision of the company, as well as the kind of the principles or values that we live by, because that really shapes the culture. And so for me, some of our principles are what I think makes us really unique and special. We, we believe in being real, showing up as your true authentic self. We have a very people first mentality of like, we try to make decisions that have our people at the heart and soul of that decision. What's good for people is good for the business mentality. And I think also one of our other principles is aim high. And we have really ambitious goals and meaning that I get to do really great, meaningful work that I believe you know, delivers impact on a daily basis. And that's something that really personally drives me as well. So if you want to have impact, work, work with great people. And, you know, we have a really great focus in prioritization on diversity, equity, inclusion, then, you know, you should definitely join Vimeo. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Sounds amazing. We're going to dig into the, uh, your, your culture and some of the values that you mentioned a little later. But before I hand over to Daniel, I have a really important question as I was preparing for this conversation, I listened to a podcast you were on, I think in 2021. And as I was listening, I, I heard an Austin shout out. I think that it was a previous company. You just launched an Austin office and you'd mentioned, yeah. you know, I, I, I have to presume that you spent some time in Austin. Is that right? Yeah, I did a little bit. So if you, if you spend a lot of time in Austin, you'll, you'll know that it's a big food town. And so I'm mm -hmm. just curious, are you team barbecue or team Tex-Mex? Oh man, that, how, I mean, that's a, that's like the hardest question. I, you told me there could be no gotchas on this one. Um, <laughs> gosh, I, I mean, I had some fantastic, fantastic barbecue in Austin. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to go with barbecue if you're forcing my hand. Solid choice. That's a solid choice. I mean, I just, I, I yeah, I had some really good barbecue while I was there and now uh -huh. you're making me hungry. 
Speaking of barbecue, uh, we had uh, we had Terry Black's for for Easter yesterday. We picked it up. I'm still burping it up, but it was so good. I don't know if y'all have been to Terry Black's, but that's like one of the iconic like Top, barbecue yeah. joints that you can go to if you're in Austin. Okay, well, I'll have to take a note of that. I don't I don't think I've been, but it sounds like it needs to go on my list. It's good. Yeah. So I I've heard you say on a past podcast, the foundation of business is the people. Without the people, you have no business, and that sometimes we forget that. And that it's possible to be both people first and run a great business. With that belief, when when you were interviewing for your role at, at Vimeo back in late 2021, was there a moment in the process where you were like, yes, Vimeo gets it. Like, this is the company that I want to work for. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That was one of my defining moments and reasons for joining Vimeo was just Every interview I had with, you know, Anjali, who's our CEO and my direct boss and the rest of the existing leadership team, my peer group, everyone was so focused on like, we want Vimeo to be a people first, talent first organization. Uh, Here's some of the things we're doing, which they had made a lot of great progress, but like we want the person that comes in and takes over this role to elevate it and t- take it a, a step further. Um, and I also loved one of the things Anjali mentioned to me, um, which she still says to this day, is that. Like there's, there's nothing sacred here at Vimeo, meaning like just because something has done, been done a certain way in the past, like there's no such thing as a status quo. And I love that because I, I think there's always more that we can do in HR to push the envelope and, and move away from being like the policy police and the check the box people who put out performance because you have to and all the things. So for me, those were like, the, those were moments that stood out in the interview process was the like, we want to be people first and nothing sacred. So have at it. And then one of the things that's interesting, you know, I've been there about a year and we had a team meeting where I brought my my team together in New York with Anjali and invited Anjali, our CEO, to come talk with us. And one of my direct reports in, in front of me, in front of Anjali asked, like, what's one thing Crystal could do better in this role? And I, Anjali's response was amazing. She's like, I wanted to come, break more stuff, like even do more to like challenge the status quo and to, you know, shake it up and, and prove that point of nothing sacred. So the fact that even like a year later, that's still important is a reason that, you know, keeps me here and and why I joined in the past too. I feel like that's what every HR leader wants to hear from, from their CEO. I think Absolutely. it was, I think it was Christine song that we had on and she was talking about like, that's what she's looking for whenever she's, you know, interviewing for a new job. She wants to find the CEO that lets her break stuff, that lets her experiment, that lets her push the boundaries. So it sounds like Vimeo is in that, that category of companies. Absolutely. And that's part of the reason I love it. And I, I feel lucky to be here. And I have a, you know, a CEO that's challenging me to do, because I think I've broken a lot in a good way. Right. And we're moving the needle and she's like, come on even more, bring it. So I was like, challenge accepted. It's on. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So I was, um, I was at dinner with a couple of friends recently and the topic of company culture came up and how to build company culture. And, um, the conclusion that we came to as, as a group is that it will form organically but it might not be the culture that that you intended to build or if you already had a you know built a great culture that if you're not constantly thinking about it it might morph into something that you wouldn't have hoped for so i guess my question for you is like do you do you think that culture is something that just happens i th- i think you're spot on i think it will evolve if you don't do anything but i'm a huge proponent of being super intentional about creating the culture that you, that creates and produces the results you want and need as an organization or drives the behaviors. There's this, it's, I can't take credit for it. It was, they used to be called partners in leadership and it was an organization that they, they introduced this idea of how you shift culture that I've really latched onto that I think is the most powerful, like culture change model I've ever heard. And it talks about at the basis of it, if you like kind of envision a pyramid with me, the base of it is, um, an intentional experience because when you come in as an employee and you experience something like through your onboarding or your just day to day interaction with your leader, like all those experiences shape someone's beliefs and those beliefs then shape your actions and your actions produce results. Right. So when I think about it, like that, that, that like aha moment from that pyramid, so to speak, has been like highlights the importance of being super intentional to create experiences that shapes people's beliefs, that drives the actions, that ultimately shape your culture and what it becomes. Um, so I, that more now than ever, I believe in being incredibly intentional about creating those experiences um, because I think that's what actually leads to culture, the culture that exists in your organization. And, and what are some examples of those experiences? 
Yeah, I think, a, you know, one, like a very simple one, but a, a, an important one is we talk about how, you know, one of our principles at, at Vimeo is be real. And a part of that is about showing up as your true authentic self, but there's also the element of, you know, being real and honest and constructive feedback and sharing wins and opportunities to grow and be even better. And so if it's, we, if we challenged ourselves to think about what are those experiences to where our employees understand the importance and value we put on being real then it's things where it's, you know, creating intentional experiences around um, de &I, around like uh, inclusive behaviors to where we show like we want everyone to treat everyone with open arms and we're inclusive of all demographic backgrounds and ways of thinking and all the things, right? So it's like showing up on, in onboarding and having de &I be front and center in your onboarding experience. That shows that we care about inclusivity. Um, it's around the emphasis we put in, in the things we do around giving and receiving feedback, right? So like after every town hall or, you know, meeting, there's an opportunity for any of our employees to give presenters feedback. I think those are like little small examples though, but are very intentional decisions to create experience where people are like, oh, I guess giving feedback, being open to receiving feedback is really valued here. Treating everyone and using inclusive language in meetings is really important because on day one of my onboarding, I sat through a training on, 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 on why that's so important at Vimeo. So those are just like little examples, but um, I think are important ones to create those experiences. I love that. I love that. And in, in preparing for this conversation, another thing that caught my eye um, was SOTVs. Oh. <laughs> so what are the state of the Vimeos or SOTVs? Yeah, well done. State of the Vimeo SOTVs. So there are company-wide uh, team meetings. So we invite all of our 1,100 plus global employees to these meetings. We do them about once a quarter, a little bit more frequently than that. But it's just an opportunity for us to come together to share customer stories, to share employee stories, to share what's you know happening across the business. It's sort of a it's a, you know a state of the union, but a state of the Vimeo. Uh, what's going on in our business? What do you need to know? Um, we also include in every SOTV an opportunity for open Q and A, which I think is really important, where employees can ask the burning questions. And we, we typically host it on our own platform, which is great, but through our venues um, product, which allows, you know, engagement and interaction, because we really want it to be this fun time where you're not only sharing information, but you're building connection with the team. And then of course, because we are a global company and, you know, how, who knows how many time zones, it's important that we can record it, share it out. Folks can, you know, view it when it works best for them as well. But yes, yeah, so they're a really, really great mechanism for us to share information and build connection with our employees. And is there, I'm just curious, is there a story you can share from a specific SOTV where you felt that your people were particularly inspired? Yeah. I mean, I think every time we do, a because we've, we maybe haven't done customer stories every time, but when we do, that's the, you know, that builds excitement and momentum because under people, it helps our employees understand the impact of their work. Right. And I think that's such an important part of right now is that we all want to feel a sense of purpose when we show up to work. We want to feel like we're doing work that has an impact and is meaningful. So anytime we have an opportunity to share a customer story, that always, you know, gets folks energized as well as in our very last one we had, which we actually hosted out of our India office in Bangalore for like true global inclusivity. Um, so it was really great because a lot of our executive team showed up in India and we broadcast live from India was rough on the time zones here in the US, but you know, we have, we have to take turns, but we did an employee panel and that was really, our, our team members loved that. Cause we got to just, we, we had a bunch of our employees, you know, talk about what they love about Vimeo and their um, different career paths they have available to them and what they've learned over the years. Um, that was really, that was really meaningful. And the last thing we did, which was we did like maybe two SOTVs ago, which was just really fun is, you know, we're not all together in a room anymore. And so we don't get the opportunity to maybe connect or share uh, recognition or praise as much as we can. So we took two minutes out of our SOTV, had everyone jump into our Slack. We have a Vimeo's shout out Slack channel where you just give each other kudos and praise or whatnot. And we just said, let's do a two minute shout out shower where you're just, and I was, I was live reading all the shout outs coming in and it was really fun. Just so much energy. We had hundreds of like, you know, team members giving each other kudos and praise and thank yous and recognition. And that, that was actually really fun. So it kind of spans, you know, a, a bunch of different traditions that you guys are using for the SOTVs yeah. uh, to to engage your people. We there's there is something powerful about talking about customer experiences. And when we were in Transform, the HR conference a couple of weeks ago, we we had a chance to interview the CEO of Chart Hop. 
uh, which is an HR tech tool that started as kind of an uh, org chart, an org chart product, and it's expanded to be a really kind of end-to-end -end data product. And so the CEO, Ian White, he was mentioning to, like five times in our conversations, like the power of customer stories and how important it is to interview customers and to share that information, not only just from like a product standpoint and improving the product, innovating the product, but just kind of you know, it, it's it's another way that you can intentionally build culture that is customer centric. Yeah. And so I love that you guys are using such a, you know, because those are quarterly meetings company wide and it's like the agendas are tied. Everyone's trying to add something in to to hear that you guys are prioritizing customer stories, I think is is really, really awesome. And so I want to loop back to your core values. I said we were going to come back to this. And in addition to the Modern People Leader, I, I run another company called Workify, and one of our core values is be human. And in every decision we make is always filtered through that lens, whether it's a people decision, something, a decision that we, we need to make that'll impact our employees or customer you know, decision that we need to make or a policy change. We always want to apply that be human lens. You mentioned this earlier, your core value of be real really stuck out to both Daniel and I. And so, you know, I, I, you've already shared a little bit about the importance of that. Um, but I'm, I'm just curious, you know, what are you doing as, as a leader of the people team? Is there anything that, that you specifically within the people function are doing to help bring that value of be real to life within your team? Yeah, I think, you know, that one's important to me. And, and I know we're not probably not supposed to have favorite values or anything, but it is, it is up there in terms of one of my favorites. I think, you know, one of the things we do is for all, all our team meetings, we usually started off with a random check-in question. One, because it gives us time to, you know, get to know each other. On, and it's, I use just a random generated one. So I really like, they can be as weird as what's your favorite hand gesture, which that one was a little bit odd to like, you know, tell us a story from your childhood and things. So uh, you never know what you're going to get, which adds a little bit of excitement, but also it just helps you connect on some non-work topic and get to know each other on a deeper level. Um, so we are in the people team specifically are, are really good about doing that opening up most of our meetings with those check-in questions. I'm also known, I think one of the greatest ways to be real and show, show some vulnerability is through jokes. I, I don't know about how others feel, but they make me feel so uncomfortable. Like if I have to tell a joke, that's like, I could never be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> And so I've been trying to bring, you know, and more, we all could use a little bit of more laughter probably in our day to day. So I've been known to uh, tell a few jokes um, in our team meetings, some land better than others. I'm not going to lie. And then also having um, some of our people leadership team do the same. And then one thing though, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I, I definitely can't take credit, but I don't know if it originated through the people team at Vimeo or elsewhere. But one thing that has been so successful about this to like bring V real to life at Vimeo is we have every single new hire across any department. When they join Vimeo, they use Vimeo, our own product, to create what we call a newbie video. So they, and we just said, there's no, there's no box, like use whatever creativity, like this is you. It can be, you know, one to two minutes on average. Um, but we just want to, like, what do you want us as an organization to know about you as a new hire? That's it. And so the creativity, the, like, the amount of information you find out in those one or two minutes in this new hire video is just so amazing. We get like, that's some of the feedback we get from those new hire videos around from the, like every month we consolidate them all together, share them out with the organization here, all the new hire videos for, for the month. And then, you know, people just the comments, the excitement, the buzz that come in after those new hires videos are shared every month is something that like, is pretty incredible. Are, are you familiar with Be Real, the company? No, I don't think I am. Okay, so uh, the quickest way of explaining it, it's a social media app that is really catching on. And the the concept of it is every day at a random time, you get a notification that says, now it's time to be real. And you have to like click into the app and you have like 30 seconds to take a photo so you can't plan it out. And um, if you if you retake the photo or if you take it at a later time, it'll say like, you know, this photo is taken 30 minutes later or two hours later. And as you're explaining some of the things that y'all do to bring the value of be real to life, I'm like, I feel like there's an opportunity to sort of like incorporate like that idea yeah. into something with y'all's culture. I love that. Now that you said that I have heard of it and I've been, it's one of those things where you hear about it and you're like, I need to go look into that. And I haven't, but I actually wrote it down this time. So I'm going to, I'm going to go check it out. 
but yeah, I think I, I love it. And I think, you know, that whether it's through a B-Real, the, the app and that activity, the concept is there and, and you know, the, the newbie videos especially bring that to life too. Those sound awesome. And I, I feel like there's also should be like a hall of fame of the best, you know, <laughs> newbie videos yeah. you guys have, have collected. I'm sure there's some great ones. And so let's talk, let's talk shop. Tell us a little bit about your people team. I love, and, and our audience loves to hear about how, what are kind of the emerging structures for people teams. And so I'm just curious, you know, how have you guys organized your people team? You're a year in, so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you've had a chance now to kind of get your agenda agreed upon and yep. the team structured the way that uh, with your fingerprints. So tell us a little bit about your team. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I'm biased, but I love, I, I, we have a fantastic people team here at Vimeo. We're about uh, just under 60 folks globally, and we have HR representation in almost every, in every region. And it's a, a group of really fantastic, smart, talented individuals who are really kind as well. Um, that they bring me a lot of joy getting to work with them on a daily basis. Uh, yeah. So look, I think one thing that's really important to me, we've had a lot of change, change and transition in the team over the last year. And I do feel like we're in a really great spot. We've got a, a really clear roadmap, focus and priorities this year. But one of the things about how we organize that I think is a bit unique that allows us to be as, as successful as we are, I think is one of my kind of overarching mantras or beliefs is that HR, the people team in general, like we should view ourselves more as a product team or a product mm -hmm. org because the things we're delivering out to the organization are essentially products. And so one of the very first things I did when I joined Vimeo, so I joined in December of 2021 and in the first week of January of, of 2022, so I'd been here like maybe three weeks, um, we did a baseline, what I called people impact survey. And the whole point of that was to understand how the business perceived us, the impact and the value we bring. And we measured like kind of a net promoter score, like, would you recommend the people team, a customer satisfaction score for us. And then we asked folks to give us feedback on the, pro on our actual products, onboarding, recruiting, performance management, L and D, et cetera. And as well as our services, like our, you know, how timely responsiveness, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so that was all, also just like a mindset shift to start thinking about ourselves as this team that delivered products and that like we had customers that were going to tell us how we're doing and hopefully, you know, give us feedback. Um, and then we basically took that feedback and that has really helped shape our roadmap and priorities, obviously last year and, and going forward still. Um, and then, you know, I think part of that is organizing then to meet the needs and operate like a product team. So we have, um, an employee experience team that owns kind of our end-to-end, -end. they're our product designers, so to speak. Internal comms sits in HR, so they help us with our campaigns and launches and getting the communications right. And we have HR operations that kind of, you know, when things go into maintenance mode, they help make sure it's ongoing so our product designers can move on to the next, you know, product to design and figure out. Um, and of course, in addition to like, that's sort of the core of the product team. And then we have, you know, TA that serves a different product, uh, recruiting, and uh, we have, you um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and social impact also sit in the HR team. And they all, we all kind of work with this mantra of we're, we're delivering products to our customers, AKA our employees. And one of the core principles in how we then work is making sure we're leveraging design thinking, like um, to making sure that we're bringing the voice of our customers into the design of every single thing that we do. And I think that's really important to make sure we're delivering the right things. Cause you can, you can, it's easy. I always say it's easy to set goals and deliver, like talk about what you're going to deliver, but it's, harder to make sure you're delivering the right things. And so I think that design thinking element really makes sure we're delivering the right things to deliver impact to the organization. Oh my goodness. It is <laughs> Sorry, like was... you, no, 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 this is amazing. I, I love, I, I'm, I'm so, I've got like chills just hearing <laughs> how, and that sounds weird about you know, this. I, I love nerding out. I've spent my career in HR and mm -hmm. you know, what, what is, particularly exciting for me is, you know, over the last couple of years, we have had a lot of conversations around like, what is truly like, what are the most cutting edge aspects of the people function? And we've had those individuals on this show to talk about, like we've had Jessica Vaughn on the show to talk about people ops as a product. And we had John Foster on the show to, uh, to talk about, you know, design thinking and how you can apply this human centered design thinking to, 
to a, to any organization. And I love like you're the first person that we've spoken to that has incorporated these cutting edge things, multiple uh, uh, aspects of these cutting edge things that we've talked about on the show mm -hmm. in your in your people team um, structure. And so, just kudos to you and to the team. I I, I that's part of our, our segment. You know, we have a segment for that later, but um, in advance of that, kudos to you because that you guys are truly doing some innovative work. And so going back to the, the value of aim high that yep. you guys have, I assume that you apply some of these to your goals. And so I'm just curious, you know, can you share any goals that, that relate to aim high or just in general that, that you're particularly excited about in 2023? Yeah. So it's interesting because we, we have this, you know, great, product mindset and that shapes how we organize and how we work. And then when you look at our roadmap, it's, um, you know, some of it's sexy and fun and very innovative, but some of it's a little bit like one of our, so we have three core areas of focus this year, three priorities on the people team. Number one is to just get brilliant to the basics. So I think sometimes when you get, you know, you got to make sure the foundation is there to actually be able to do some of this really creative, innovative work. And so there are some foundational gaps that we still need to fill in. So that's probably the least sexy and fun, but I think so important and so foundational for us to be able to do more, right? So brilliant at the basics. Um, number two is, is my personal favorite. And I think when I think about aiming high, this is where we're doing a lot of our work this year. And that's, we really want our goal is to be the home for high impact, diverse talent. So we want to make sure everyone that's joining us is able to have an incredible impact and that, that, and the diversity of our, of our people is celebrated. Um, so there's a lot of work happening there. And then the third one is designing a culture of learning and growth. We want to become much more intentional. So I'm, I got to hold my feet to the fire when I talk about creating those experiences that make people believe something's really important. We need to create more experiences this year that help people understand the value we, we put on learning and growth and development. And so I'd say, you know, when I think about some of the work I'm most excited about, it's we're, we're launching like a new learning experience platform to put like learning in the fingertips of all of our employees. We're really doubling down on management training, which again, isn't like new and sexy, but like making sure it's really impactful. And we're actually giving them the tools and support to be the best leader that they can be. We're also, we hired a, we have a fantastic new head of uh, diversity, equity, inclusion that just joined a few months ago. So we're doing a ton of work on um, creating a culture of belonging, which again, will help be attract people for to, to Vimeo, you know, for that high impact, diverse talent. And then, um, you know, brilliant at the basics is some stuff that we're just doing around our data and, and core HRIS to make it like, we want everyone to be able to come in and do real impactful work versus like, I, I got to file a T, you know, T and E report. And, oh, I can't like request my time off takes 10 clicks. Like, I'm like, no, no, no. One, one button speed, like that's like all about employee productivity and efficiency. And so I, you know, I'm actually excited about that because that's going to impact my life too. Like when I'm like, oh, I have to fill out like an expense report. How many hours later is that going to take? You know, so if we're able to really tighten that up, it's actually going to be a good thing. So you mentioned that you're launching a new learning experience platform. Can you, can you briefly just share a little bit more about that? Yeah. So we haven't, at Vimeo, we haven't historically had like an online learning system. So, so we're just, and what we're excited about is we're, we're not interested in like compliance-esque learning. You know, we're talking about like, how do you engage in something where you're like, I'm about ready to go into an interview with Crystal Boyce and this you know, chief people officer at Vimeo. I need to brush up on X skills or me coming into actually a better example would be me getting ready to come talk to you all being like, maybe I should brush up on my, uh, you know, succinct communication skills or something like that, right? I could just go take a quick lesson in real time on this platform that has a bunch of um, really impactful learning at, you know, that makes accessible to like every employee. And also we, what I like and why we, why we went with a experience platform is that you can create learning journeys like that are really targeted to a department or to a role. And so a lot of our emphasis are, is going to be around creating learning journeys around diversity, equity, and inclusion, because that's really important to us. So, you know, I'm someone that wants to invest in how can I be a more inclusive leader? How do I, you know, go into meetings with more inclusive language? I could jump online, type that in, have an experience and go into a meeting much more informed. Um, and then also for like department specific learning to help build like technical skills and whatnot. So it's just, it's like the new, you know, new version of the, the boring old learning management systems. It's much more dynamic, it's less compliance focus. It's more experiential of like also in, in incorporates peer to peer learning and learning in groups, which I think is a great way to learn. Is this homegrown or is this a partner that you're working with? Yeah. So we we're 
we haven't got like officially announced who we're going with, but yeah, we're, okay. we're out in the market looking and we're down to two. And I thought that's, what's cool is to see that technology in that space evolve. Um, Cause I, you know, I grew up in L and D once in HR, really, I think that's kind of yeah. my background. So to see what's available in the market today than many years ago is, is exciting. And I like this concept of, you know, this shift from even like learning management system to a learning experience platform is even, you know, it gives you indication. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's folks like Edcast, Docebo. Those are, you know, two that we're looking at and more lessonly, you know, there's a, some great vendors in the field. I'm going to go look those up. Yeah. We, so many things to talk to you about, I Crystal, <laughs> and we always, we always run out of time. And so before I hand over to Daniel to kind of bring this, this conversation to a close, I want to talk about talent. Unfortunately, there continue to be, you know, um, layoffs and it's a very challenging um, economy, very challenging labor market right now. And, yeah. um, and so I'm, I'm interested, you know, and this is for the people out there that are open to work that are, that are really doing everything they can to, to kind of find that next dream job. You know, I, I'm, I'm curious, what are some of the, the ways that Vimeo is approaching, you know, this, this problem a little differently in terms of sourcing talent and sourcing the right talent? And what advice would you have to anyone that's out there, you know, looking for the job, of their dreams again, and, you know, is really just trying hard to stand out? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's an interesting time for sure. I think, um, you know, twofold. So for us at, at Vimeo, it's, you know, one thing that it's, remains consistent ever since I joined is that we do really focus on like what an employee, like through the interview process, the impact an employee can deliver, a candidate can deliver. I think that's something we always want to hear and see about like um, tangible examples that, and then how that drove impact to the business. And then equally though, which I think is important is that we also double down on like their, their principles and the values, right? So we spend a lot of our interview time talking to, to potential candidates and prospects around their values and, you know, making sure there's that values match in terms of what's important to Vimeo is important for them. And I think that's, you know, important. So as a, so advice I would give for someone looking um, is one, to be able to really always be able to talk about your experience in terms of the impact to the business. I think that that is a, a must have, um, you know, show initiative around problem solving and, you know, not only identifying problems, but being able to bring solutions to the table that you then were able to implement and then obviously demonstrated the impact. And then equally so be really clear on your values and the, and the strengths that you bring to the table. Because I think that's another thing, like in, in this environment, especially if you're out looking, you might have to flex a little bit into like maybe trying a different, a little bit of a different career path than you thought, given, you know, recruiting is often one of the hardest hits areas in the HR organization. So it might be a great opportunity for someone who's traditionally been in recruiting to think about roles in, you know, HR operations or business partnering. So think about those transferable skills and experiences you have um, is another good one to kind of, you know, I think, that's my best bit of advice is be really clear on the, the strengths that you can bring to the table in any role that are the, those transferable skills as then well, as well as like what brings you joy and meaning at work and being able to like, cause I think one of the things I love is I'm, I'm a sucker for contagious energy. Like in an interview, when you can tell someone's just like passionate about the company, like a Vimeo and they're passionate about the role and the work, I can't help but get like sucked in, you know? And so there is something about just bringing the energy and the passion and letting that shine through about what, why you're excited to be, you know, have the opportunity for this role is something that like I personally get excited about as well. That's great advice. I think when, when you're down and times are tough, it's hard, you know, it, it's hard to kind of you know, show that kind of emotion and energy just when generally it's, it's a tough time. And so, you know, bringing the passion to, to those interviews and the conversations, you know, I think is, is a great reminder. I mean, you two probably see it, but when I get excited, I start to talk really fast. So I've had, when I've been interviewing in the past, I've had, you know, prospective employers be like, can you say that again? Or can you slow down? I'm like, I'm sorry. It's just my excitement. I can't help it. Um, so, you know, I, I fall victim myself, but that's funny. I, I'm definitely the same way. If you get me going about something that I have a lot of passion about, um, whether it's like the NBA or <laughs> I don't know, trying to figure yeah. out how to get better at golf, like whatever it is, I start talking mm -hmm. real fast or about podcasting. Um, right. So we only have a few minutes left and we, we want to get through the rapid fire questions. So we ask the same set of questions to every guest that we have on and we've changed it a bit over the last few months and I actually have a surprise question for you that, uh, I didn't, we didn't send over to you in advance. Oh, um, 
So question one, how do you define a modern people leader? What are the traits and characteristics? Uh, highly compassionate, like a deep level of empathy, impact driven and energy conscious. And what I mean by that is able to manage your own energy and the energy of the team. Cause I think right now with burnout and all that being so high, like I think that we need to focus more on, you know, our own energy and, and conserving and building energy of others around us. Those are my three. I'm blanking on the name of the show, but there's this uh, comedy about these vampires that live in uh, New Jersey. And uh, one of them isn't an actual vampire. He's an energy vampire. So <laughs> I, I, and I've heard people call other people that they work with energy vampires. So I'm, I'm very energy conscious. I try to make sure that I bring, oh, what we do in the shadows. That's exactly the, that's okay. the show I was thinking of. Yeah. I have to watch this. It's, it's hilarious. All right. So if you could go back in time and talk to a 22 year old you, what career advice would you give yourself and why? Ooh. I think the thing, one of the things I value most, and I wish someone would have told me earlier in my career is I had always been good at solving or identifying problems, but not always coming to the table with solutions as well. So I always like, to me, someone who creates a lot of impact and value in my own organization is someone who uh, spots a problem and also can bring a solution or two to the table alongside it. Um, so to be as solution oriented, um, also, you know, I think along those same lines, it's like, you know, the concept of first principle thinking, like. I have a four-year-old, so I just, I'm, I'm luckily a little bit out of the Y phase, but like, I will, I love an employee that who will challenge and ask why, like, why are we doing this? Why is this the way it is? Like, we don't get that enough. So I've, I've been known a time or two to tell my team members, be more like my three-year-old, <laughs> ask why more, like, you know, never take things for granted. So um, that I'd say first principles thinking of asking why, as well as then, you know, bring solutions as well as the problems to the table. That's excellent advice. I feel like often early in your career, it's uh, it's a bit intimidating to ask why or to challenge your boss. So I think that's really good advice. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do a shout out shower. That's what y'all call it. at. Yeah, that's what I heard you refer well to it as yeah. at Vimeo. So now is your moment or your time to give as many shout outs to the either people on the, the Vimeo people team or just, you know, more broadly speaking, people from the Vimeo team. Oh man, that's a tough one because I want to give shout outs to everyone, but I will shout out to our, our global people team. We have a hashtag one team, one dream. They are, they are the team. I mean, I feel so much, I feel so lucky and I hope they know how valued they are. Um, so a huge thank you to the entire people team at, here at uh, Vimeo. I appreciate you all. I'm so grateful for you. And um, I'm really excited for what we're going to be able to, to do in 2023. We've got some big lofty goals um, and we've got the right team to do it. So Hashtag one team, one dream. I love them. One team, one dream. Yeah. All right. So here's the here's the surprise question. So recently we went to Transform, uh, which is you know big work work conference. Yeah. And um, one of the one of the panels that we attended was a VC panel, and uh, Allison Baum Gates, who was was hosting the panel, she did a round of Future or Fad, where she would list out different topics or trends in the work setting and ask the panel, is this a future or is this a fad? And um, we don't have a list of things for you, but of all of the trends or things that we're hearing about related to work, what's what's the future of work and what's just a fad? Oh, that's a good one. I mean, it's top of mind for me right now. And I think it's the future sure is this concept around the energy crisis like i don't think it's it's something that i think has been around a lot longer it's not something new it's not a fad it's it's actually been around for a lot long a long much longer time than we probably realize it just for some reason we weren't talking about it or wasn't it got exacerbated over the last couple of years so i think it's a true problem that we need to like really solve for and i think hr um, and people teams play a big role in the organization to help help do that so i'd say the energy crisis is sadly the future, and we've got to find a, a solution for it. Um, fad is a tough one. I'm trying to think of anything off the top of my head that it's a fad. Cause I, you know, we're doubling the things we're doubling down on, I think are, are the right things for the future in terms of wellness, social impact, sustainability, um, energy, D and I, like those are, those are all important things to stay. I'll, I'll put one out there. What okay. about generative AI or chat GPT specifically future oh, of fad? I, I mean, I think it's the future. I do. I think, I think it's going to be here to stay. I think it's really going to, if we, what I would love to see is how like HR is going to, cause we're, I mean, I'm going to 
stereotype and I can say this about myself, I guess, but it feels like sometimes we're the last to adopt the like creative, innovative stuff. I think we're probably, you know, so it's like, but I also think I could see so much power if we were to adopt and use AI in ways I probably can't even imagine today, like the power that that could bring to an organization. So I think it's the future. I agree. I used chat GPT for the first time uh, last week and I was like, oh my God, I don't know why it took me so long. I'm an old head, right? Because yeah, I, that's just that's just a fact. But uh, but I use it and I was like, wow, okay, I get it now. So I, I'm with you on that. Well, we were at that stage. It's time to 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 bring the conversation to a close. We have a couple more questions and traditions that uh, that we need to get through. Um, but real quick, you know, the the success we've had on the Modern People Leader, first of all, we're humbled that we're here talking to you today. I mean, this is just so awesome to be able to have a conversation with you, Crystal. And th this has been all possible for us because of, you know, the the people that we've had on the show and partly the question that we that, that I'm about to ask you. And so when you think about and, and and you are a trusted source, right? At least based on this conversation, because I know you know what the cutting edge aspects of the people function are. But when you think about truly, you know, people that are truly innovating in our space, people that have to be heard, that we have to give them a voice or platform, you know, who would you nominate as a person that that has to be showcased on the modern people leader? I've got two. One? Okay. One is maybe not as HR related, but I think that they would be really valuable. And it, it's, you know, again, I have my my bias lens, but I, you heard me talking about um, design thinking and human-centered design. Um, I, you know, am a big fan of David Kelly, who's the founder of mm -hmm. the, the global design and innovation company, IDEO. Um, mm -hmm. Kelly, David Kelly also founded um, Stanford's Institute of Design, known as their D school. And I like that's where I started learning about this that I've then brought into any HR organization that I've had the opportunity to lead. Um, so David Kelly would be high on my list um, in terms of someone I think, you know, would be interesting to hear how um, his perspective on how HR could absorb more of this human-centered design thinking elements. Um, and, that you know, I'm a fan of the, the, Sam, the Stanford D School as well. Uh, so David Kelly is number one. And then another one who's a bit more on the HR focus, but it's, um, her name's Rodney Evans. And she uh, is, I think, a co-founder and an, you know, a member of an organizational design firm called The Ready. And I've, I've had the honor to work with her in a couple um, instances. And she, just the way they think about organizational design, um, especially with the HR lens and like uh, working agreements of what makes an organizational organization really tick and click um, in terms of how, and based on how they're designed and the operating agreements of how you work together. It's some of the most groundbreaking, like new age thinking that I think is not a fad. It's here to stay. Um, so I encourage anyone that I've ever talked to, to, to talk to folks at the ready. Um, and Rodney jumps out as someone I, I really respect. Love it. Well, we will take a look and into into what yeah. they're saying, and if we are so lucky to 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 have them, we would it would be an honor. And so now we've reached our final tradition. It's what we call one word or one phrase close. It's you know we each share one word or phrase that we uh, as we reflect on the last hour that we've shared together. We want to wrap things up with. Oh, do I need to go first? What are your words? You don't I I can you go first to. if y'all are right, still I need, thinking. I need someone to go first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this. I got this. <laughs> I'm gonna say be real, and oh, I'm actually Daniel. dropping oh. uh, a YouTube link in the chat that that you should go watch. And this is an SNL sketch <laughs> on uh, the company Be Real, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, mine's, mine's actually energy. I think I've gotten a lot of energy from this conversation. I've enjoyed it immensely, but also I think, you know, we've talked a lot about the importance of, of managing energy and um, bringing energy to the work that we're doing. So energy is my word. I'm going to go with clarity. And Crystal, you have this profound sense of clarity in the work you do and why you do it and how you do it and the examples you provided. And, um, you know, we, we have... We, we've spoken to more than 100 individuals now, and, you know, this conversation has really jumped out of me. I've just really impressed, and it's just been a lot of fun to hear everything you've shared with us. So thank you for being so, so clear and, and all your, your responses and, uh, and also being a little vulnerable to, to allow us into to what's going on in your life. So thank you. Some, some would say that Crystal is crystal clear. 
Sorry, I had to try wow. out the joke. That's a good one. Uh, I have to tell you one other thing. Um, speaking of SNL skits, if you watched SNL over the weekend, there was a skit on, I don't, without giving away too much, I'll see if I can find the clip and share it because as you shared an SNL skit, skit with me, but it was on Weekend Update. They had a coworker um, who the character was named Crystal, which makes it even better. <laughs> And it was about it was about the coworker who's always really busy. You've got to watch it. It was pretty hilarious. And then I took you know slight offense to her name being Crystal. <laughs> I oh my god! I can't wait to go see it. Yeah, yeah go watch it. Was just this weekend, that Molly Shannon was the host. Love it, love it. Well, it's that time. Thank you guys for a great conversation and an amazing way to end a Monday. It's been an absolute blast. My energy is restored. I Same. I was having a case of the Mondays, but the energy is back. Thank you, Crystal. Let's go. Thank, Thank you, you both. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Bye. Bye.